Welcome back. It's great to see you, Trigger Proof Tribe. Um, just giving a moment for people to hop on right now. And I wanted to welcome you. I just woke up from a, a nap. Uh, I am severely jet lagged right now. I just came back from Indochina uh, just a couple days ago. And I am so jet lagged. As soon as it hits the afternoon, it's as though like a Mack truck has hit me. It's like, whoa, I get hit. And uh, so I usually need a nap around 2 or 3 p.m. It's a long and busy day. And um, welcoming you back. A um, lot of new members since even this morning. I wanted to welcome you if you're brand new uh, to this group. Uh, once again, my name is Dr. Nima Romani, and uh, I've been a chiropractor for, seems like forever, but uh, it's still my first love. And uh, I want to welcome you to this group that's really dedicated to uh, the art of self-regulation, the art and neuroscience of self-regulation, which is probably one of the most important things that we can do right now. And the first thing that I'd like to invite you to do is to go ahead and click on the get notifications uh, and see first in everything that pops up in this um, uh, in this group, uh, a training that's going to pop up. It's going to happen again and again. I'm going to see if I can get rid of uh, whatever is open, whatever window is open that seems to be, uh, no, I can't, I guess I can't see it. Yeah, I, I keep getting these little beeps from uh, Facebook and it's gonna be annoying, but that's okay, whatever. Um, our first topic, uh, day one's assignment was about creating a vivid vision. Now, something's interesting, this is a free group which has its benefits and then it's got its drawbacks. In my program, we have our clients start off their entire programs. Usually what we do is we're helping people who are in various states of stress. Um, most of the times people reach out to me uh, are in their a relationship crisis. They're either going through a divorce, they're going through a separation, or there's a career crisis where they don't really know who they are and they want to step up to another level. They want to become entrepreneurs or they've kind of leaving that. So that transitional anxiety of going into the unknown is something that I specialize in, not just from a, a technical teaching uh, neuroscience background, but also in my own life as going through breakup, divorce. I had to actually become uh, everything that I'm, you know, teaching right now. So I teach what I most need to learn, what I most needed to learn. And it just so happens that during a crisis like this, like an epidemic that's going on like this, the exact same principles apply. And that principle is your number one job. The most important thing in, the, in your life is regulating yourself, self-regulating, which means during a triggered moment, you watch a news article, you see something, your mind will want to wander. And it usually wanders into a doomsday future, which is kind of the negative bias that we have, our d default mechanism, the negative bias, which is there to keep us safe, which actually comes from the past. And so here we have this past future thing going on. And when we get triggered, we get sent off into a different place that is outside of our bodies, outside of our hearts, into our fears, outside of our creative neocortex, into the amygdala fight or flight response, creating a separation, us versus you. So your brain and nervous system, in fact, the collective nervous systems of the entire planet right now are under a great deal of dysregulation. And so this group is dedicated to changing that conversation because whatever solutions we're going to come up with aren't going to be done when we're all in a state of dysregulation. If you don't believe me, try to think of the last time you were arguing with your partner. You guys were getting into a really deep argument. In, in the height of, of the rage, in the height of the complete dysregulation, do you come up with solutions to bridge the gap or does it happen more readily when you are calm? 
and relaxed. And so every training that we have is dedicated to having you become that, having you become calm, regulated. And I believe that social media can be used to help awaken consciousness rather than keep you unconscious. And that's what this group is about. So the first thing that I'm going to say is I want you to invite several of the people that you know uh, that you love and care about so that they can learn these tools. And um, yeah, so the first, uh, th why I'm telling you this is because whenever we have our clients, you know, they're stuck in that state, the first thing that we get them to do in the programs that we run is to create a mission statement, a vision statement. And guess what they have the biggest problem with doing? That very thing. And the thing is, because we're kind of riding their butts about it, they have to submit their mission statements. And each and every time they say, oh my God, it was so difficult. And so that's the work that they must do. And what happens is when you override all of the stories that block you from doing the exercise, you then create a vision for yourself so that when you're going through the chaos, when you're going through the challenge, you have something to look up to as an aim. In other words, you must be giving your brain and your nervous system in order to regulate it, must be giving it something inspiring to aim at, which is why, which was the reason behind the exercise number one for the day. Now, I'm really pleased to see several of you in the thread beneath sharing what your vision is. I'm going to encourage you to do that. In fact, I'm going to encourage you to do it right now after this this uh, is finished. And I want you to watch it and, and read it carefully, write it carefully, what your vision is for this entire transformation period. So people are right now in that space where I don't know who I am. I don't know what's going to happen. Good. Good, good that I don't know what's going to happen. It's fantastic that I have no clue how things are going to pan out because that gives me an opportunity to set an intention, you know, to set a, 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 a kind of a vision for what things look like for you, what you want to build towards. And here's the other part. In order to get there, other things that aren't that must crumble away. And that's what we're seeing right now. Number one is a total acceptance. You must have a total acceptance of the fact that the world that you were in three months ago is different than the world you'll be returning to after this whole um, coronavirus thing is kind of blown over, kind of like the 9-11 thing. We have to first have total acceptance of what is. In other words, <sighs> I want you to get a felt sense of surrender that you don't have control and that you don't need to try to control everything. And then that's okay. As long as you show up regulated and resourced and open as that greater version that you have in your vision, you can bet on the fact that there will be opportunities, plenty of opportunities, plenty of um, uh, examples and uh, platforms for you to share your gifts with. I promise you that if you decide to stay centered and connected with yourself there will constantly be those opportunities. There always has. You've, you've always seen that in your life. You, there has been direct evidence in your life to support that. And this time will be no different. The difference is that right now in this moment, it's not really about the virus. What's happening right now is that there is a lack of feeling of safety that's happening in your body that's very familiar. And what's happening is your body is trying to keep you safe. This is a mechanism within your body that wants to protect you from danger. So it keeps you on this hypervigilance and this alert, which is a very beautiful thing for your safety. And we can now use those triggers as a portal to go in and self-soothe. So the first step that I had requested, and I'm going to you know, recommend that you, you know, ask as many questions as possible. Is it awkward if I'm dialing in with, from the pooper? <laughs> Alessandro, I'm most concentrated here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Nope. If you're on the shitter, hey, that's that's all good. Just make sure you wash your freaking hands, okay? And don't touch your wife afterwards because she's 
about to have a baby and you want to make sure she's okay. All right, Alessandro, uh, that Adidas tracksuit brings all the power. <laughs> Shut up. Okay, so first and foremost, I want you to ask any questions. I'm giving you a you know an ask me anything Q and A, but I you know specific to if you haven't read if you haven't watched the first training, I'm going to encourage you to do that. It's scrolling up in the timeline of the the group. What questions do you have about this 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 topic, especially about creating a vision? Okay, um, you know what. What questions do you have about setting up a vision? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to imagine yourself there. Can you see that picture? It's a little bit of a, a glare from the light, but that's a picture of the Earth from the moon. I want you to give, that's kind of what the, the imagery I have for what's called my overview method. The overview effect was what the astronauts would feel when they would leave the planet and they would see that we're in an oasis in the middle of a desert that there isn't really an us versus them, it's just us. And so they had this cognitive shift when they would come back down to Earth and they didn't see the world the same. And I find that vision very inspiring. So I'm gonna in encourage you to look at yourself now from that perspective. This is a very good opportunity for us to really get real, to waken up from our unconsciousness and really say, hey, who am I? What am I here to do on that pale blue dot. Are there any questions from um, from today or anything at all that you would like to, to learn? Any specifics? Please uh, write in the comment section. Your engage, this, this whole thing, this whole game depends on your engagement. Engagement is a funny thing. Engagement means that you are using your prefrontal cortex. Engagement means you're out of your monkey mind into your prefrontal cortex, which has you be more present and taking in what's around in the environment and using creativity outward. That all depends on your engagement. Here's the biggest obstacle in the way. When you're in a state of alarm and anxiety, guess what's the last thing that you wanna do? The very last thing you wanna do is to engage with other people. You actually want to isolate. This is what we tell our clients too. When you go into state of alarm and things are not okay or you have kind of like a 911 going on, you just want to hide and isolate. And this group is really about changing that conversation. It's about saying, hey, here I am. This is what I'm committed to doing. This is what I'm, um, I'm here to, to learn and grow. Uh, I have questions or I'm scared. You know, I, I'm feeling quite anxious. Alessandra asks, I find that I yearn to share the current situation problem with everyone I talk to. I'm not the encouraging force I'd like to be and I end up looking to, for comfort even though I'd like to provide the opposite in return. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, Alessandra, you are one of those guys who um, are, are kind of like, here's the question you wanna ask. The, this is the question that you wanna ask. This group is for people who wanna take on being the space where others feel safer around them. Okay, here's the question that I'm gonna encourage everybody who's here, you're here because of a specific thing because you wanna learn how to self-regulate. So I'm gonna encourage you to answer this question, okay? And you're about to be a dad soon, Alessandro. So this is really important for you. This is why I'm doing this. I'm about to be a dad. Did you know that, by the way, Alessandra? Yeah, I just found out a couple weeks ago. Um, I'm going to be a father. So this is another big why, why I'm doing this, is because I want um, my kid to look back at this time, kind of like the way we look at 9-11, and say, hey, my dad really, you know, uh, he stepped up and he shared his gifts with people during that time. Okay, and the question I'm gonna encourage you to ask yourself, Alessandro, and everybody who's listening, is what kind of a contribution am I to the space that I take up? <laughs> in other words, in other words, if I am in, you're in, right now you're in my space. In other words, you're in my virtual energy field, wherever you are in the planet. I want you to write down where you're tuning in from actually in the comment section, where are you tuning in from? Wherever you are in this moment, you're in my virtual space.
So I have chosen to take responsibility for that space that everybody who enters that space feels more grounded and connected and deeply um, and, and safer with themselves. Okay, so everybody who enters my space feels seen, feels heard, feels loved, and feels safer. That's my commitment, whether you're my team, whether you're a client, whether you're in this group as a, you know, as a, as a, just a member of this community, that because you're in my space, my impact on you is that you will be more grounded. You will be more centered. You will be more self-loving. You will be more understanding of yourself. You'll be able to uh, expand in your leadership. And the only way that I'm able to do that is by taking responsibility for my own nervous system to regulate it. Okay, that's the only way. Because what I put, like, this is so cool that when you get this, this, these tools right, people will start to feel better just by being in your presence. I remember when I started doing all of this magic stuff that I'm sharing with you guys for free. The difference is, here's the problem. If you're not actually paying for it, you don't have skin in the game, you're less likely to do the work. I know this because we have our clients who pay us thousands of dollars to get coaching from us, and still they don't want to do it because of the ego resistance. So I know that you're going to have some resistance to doing the work, and that's fine. That's actually part of the game. Um, but essentially, what, you want, what you're going to do is you're going to be the one that's in charge of transforming that space around you so that other people feel more seen, more heard, more loved around you. And that all depends on your nervous system. And it's all be and it all is guided by the content that you put into your mind, by what you read, by what you listen to. Garbage in, garbage out. And that this is the truth. Okay, so, and here's the other part of this, Alessandro, because you asked this question, is you have to understand that pe people, can, people are impacted by the words that you choose. You can change how people feel simply by the words that you choose in your writing, in your speaking, literally the words that I'm using right now are all carefully chosen to guide you back into your hearts outside of your heads, out of panic and fear into a sense of self-safety, into a sense of community, into a sense of belonging. Everything that I'm saying, that's what my commitment is. So your, your um, assignment number one is to create a vision. Watch the video from earlier today. Creating a vision for yourself and your family for who you would love to become as a result of all of this. That's the first step, okay? Here's the second step. You block out all content and language that is not in alignment with that. Let me say that again. This is gonna be challenging for some of you. It's up to you to do the work. I'm not gonna be riding your ass here. You know, it, our, our, um, kind of program and our clients that we work with, we, we do that for because we're committed to their vision. We sh they share their vision with us and we as coaches, we're like, uh -uh, I know that you want to go this way, but remember what you committed to? That's how anything really valuable gets done. That's how you've actually accomplished anything in your life. Think about it. Take something that you've ever accomplished in your life that you feel really proud of, that was like a road to get there, that wasn't easy to get there, that you had to work your butt off to get to. Think about that, okay? Now let's work backwards. What was the language that you were using? What were your thoughts about? What were you thinking of? What were your action steps? If you're like anybody who's accomplished anything that was difficult, it was a climb and it took a militant, Hyper vigilant vision, a commitment to a vision. And what we're going to continuously have you do throughout day to day, as I hear ambulances and stuff going on all day downtown Vancouver while I'm in quarantine, 
the question you're going to ask it, you're going to do, you're going to basically hold that vision and not the circumstance. That's how anything, that's how anything inspiring, that's how you've ever created anything inspiring is by holding on to the vision. It's the, like Martin Luther King, I have a dream. He literally had a dream and a vision regardless of what was going on around him that had, there was no evidence around his, you know, exterior that that vision was going to even remotely come true but that vision was all he was focused on and that's the only way that anything amazing is going to be able to happen in your life and can potentially happen through this this um you know crisis situation that the world is under i hope that answered it for you alessandro let me know are there any other questions you know i thought i wanted to really create something, not just to keep myself busy uh, during this uh, pandemic crisis, uh, but also to do to, to share what, what I'm really good at, which is helping people through crisis. This is actually my, my jam, you know, and um, the crisis that people usually end up coming to, to our, you know, into my, across my desk, my virtual desk is relationship crisis or career crisis. So um, it's just so interesting that the, the foundation of it all is the exact same. So tomorrow we're going to go into a um, little bit more of nervous system regulation. It's going to build on today's kind of lesson. So I really want you to go back and, and watch again. Are there any questions? Do you have any other questions? Perfect. Goal. How far into a SMART goal do we need to go into this vision? As much as you want. Maybe you also have to first encourage yourself. Hey, Nate, nice to see you, brother. Congratulations on being a dad. Thanks, Eddie. Thank you, brother. Um, yeah, yeah, that's pretty neat, hey, Alessandro? Uh, yeah, I, went, I saw you at your place in San Francisco a couple weeks ago, and I, I didn't know. We, she was pregnant at the time, but we didn't know. So. And here you guys are about to have a kid, so it's coming up. So Jasmine, you asked, okay, how do you not give in to the distractions around you while going through this? Okay, great question. It starts with your evening beforehand, Nathan. Beforehand, Nathan, you're going to get a journal and you're going to write down, um, write these things down. Okay, so these are the, the, the prompting questions that you're going to ask. And go ahead and write them in the comment section so that you have them written down and everybody else can see them. The first thing you're going to write down is this, my f th five wins or celebrations from today. Okay, five wins or celebrations from today. So you can do that right now. In fact, I'd like for you to do that right now. Let's write, write down three celebrations or wins in, your, in the group right there, in the comment section. While you do that, I'm going to grab some water. I'm just uh, staying. Hold on. Give me one second. What's up? What's up? So write down three wins. So to answer your question, this is a great question. Who else would like to have this question answered? You'll notice, here's the interesting thing, Nate. Nate, you're going to notice that the answer to this question isn't just about the pandemic. This is actually for your life. This is about being an entrepreneur. You're a chiropractor. You're building a practice. You're, you're a father to a beautiful little girl. She's absolutely adorable. And you're going to have to do your, this is not just about this pandemic time, but this, these are tools for your entire life is how do I stay focused on this where I have all of this chaos, there's a storm going on around me and my ego actually wants to wait until that storm has settled before I can go back to the daily business of doing life. I'm here to tell you that that's actually part of life that the storm doesn't actually go away. When this storm is gone, you're into another one. The delusion is this storm must pass and then I'll get on with my life. Eh, wrong. This is actually a part of the game. Okay, and stoic philosophers, um, personal development coaches, psychologists have been studying this for centuries. 
okay? And the answer is this. I'm going to give you the answer. You start the night before by writing down what the celebrations are, your wins. What have been your greatest wins for the day? For me, uh, greatest win is that I had, an, I had a couple of amazing calls with clients, which I helped them reconnect with their younger selves that were that were fractured, that were that were dissociated, disconnected because of early trauma. I got them to meet their younger selves, which is that dissociation is where the root cause of the codepend of our codependencies come from. I helped two clients today reconnect throughout all of this chaos, reconnected them with their younger selves that were that they abandoned at a young age just to please just to be the fixer okay just to just, just to help others right uh, and, and to be safe and so that's a huge win to be able to contribute to somebody like that and if i don't take the moment and look back on my day and go gee that was really cool tick write that down um i will step over it and my mind will go back to what's not, what's not um, working in my life. And, and you know what? I'm always going to find something like that. There will always be something, some sort of evidence that things are not working. So the first thing you're going to write down tonight before bed, Nathan, is five wins from my day today. Okay? Next thing you're going to write down is the journal prompting, which is uh, how I – What's the question that I ask? Um, how I'm going to sleep tonight? How I, f how I f will feel when I wake up tomorrow morning is. So what you're doing is you're basically keeping yourself kind of in the mindset of the f the future, like not in just like oh like in a in a way of fear, but intentional. The whole idea is you're being intentional with your life. Because right now we're in this state of alarm and panic. We go into doomsday and then we stop being able to see opportunities in the now because we're in the past and in the future, jumping back and forth. So intentionally creating how you're going to sleep is very powerful. I usually say I wake up fully rested, relaxed, and ready and inspired to start my day. Okay? That's the second part. And number three is you're going to create this vision, this vivid vision that you're writing down, Alessandro, that you said, I did. I'm writing my vision now. Perfect. So now that you've written that um, vision, okay, now that you've written that vision, perfect. Way to go, Nathan. Coming home to my crib, being hope for others by still being open. Great. Now notice when you said that, how you felt, <sighs> just by writing out and pointing your brain towards what is working actually has a very profound healing effect on your nervous system. <sighs> okay, that's amazing. I helped a battered woman regain some peace in her life. Way to go, Jasmine. Uh, what, what if you can't come up with three wins? Eddie, you can. That's bullshit. That's complete bullshit. You must look. Start small, okay? Let me give you an example, Eddie. If you were to look back on your life two years ago, what problems were you going through that you can look back on now and go, oh my God, I made it through. I would have, I would have only dreamed. I'm living what I would have dreamed of two years ago. There's a win right there, guaranteed. And just in you looking, your, the, the neuroscience in your brain, just in the looking for the wins and the celebrations and the gratitudes has a profound effect on your uh, serotonin receptors in your brain on the serotonin production and uh, it's very valuable for you just the act of looking for the things that you're grateful for have a profound effect on your nervous system how i feel when i'm awake in the morning is perfect okay great so just by doing that you're now looking for that okay great how you're going to feel when you wake up in the morning and then here's the next part nathan I want you to really create your mission, your vision statement, and make it be as vivid as possible and keep expanding on it. And throughout the day, when you find yourself veering, which will happen, because this is a game of going from unconscious to conscious, this is a moment-to-moment -moment thing. 
choosing over the next hour to focus your mind and your body. Here's the key. Your mind and your body on what that vision looks like and feels like. And every single time there's something that causes you to veer away, what do you do? <sighs> Take five breaths. You become conscious. Well, your body's giving you feedback. This state of alarm is starting to build. Ah, that's a feedback mechanism for me to stop, push the pause button and take five deep diaphragmatic breaths that cause my, sh my, my rib cage to expand because the expansion of the rib cage sends a message to the brain that says all is well. So let's do it right now together. Watch, watch how you feel after you're done. Five deep breaths expanding your chest. Go ahead. I want you to surrender the exhale. And as you breathe, and now notice all of the muscles in your body relaxing touching your hand to your chest Acknowledging, I'm safe in this moment. I'm safe in this moment. And Nathan, you're going to do that again and again and again and again throughout the day. That's the work. And, and what you're going to do is soon, when you do this and you get this right, soon you're going to be able to discern and distinguish your true self from your ego. This is the key and it takes practice because what happens right now when we get triggered, we, our ego basically starts to drive the bus, the part that's there for self-protection. Oh no, don't go there. This person is scary. Don't go there. Like keep, keep away, right? Uh, start being suspicious, us versus them. That's our ego. That's our shadow, part of our shadow self that comes out that wants to protect us. Um, most of us, most humans, I know most Persians, <laughs> I can't say for the, the majority of others, the ego pretty much is driving the bus. There's no distinguishing between the ego and the real self. But soon after you do this, you'll be able to go, oh, that's just my ego. I can see it. I'm a witness to it. And when you're a witness to it, you now have choice. Okay, Victor Fra uh, was Victor Frankl that said, in, there's a space between stimulus and response. And in that space lies our power and freedom to choose. I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing the quote. You can write it out. Somebody would check it, check it out for me. There's a space between stimulus and response. And in that space lies our power and freedom to choose or our, within that choice lies our pre freedom and power. What the entire concept of trigger proof is all about is helping you expand that space between stimulus and response little secret that I have here is that this isn't just about a pandemic and I tell my clients this when they're in their when they're when they're in the, the program that we have is when they come to the end I'm like I have a little secret is that your programs never finished these are tools that you'll be using for the rest of your life every single time you're confronted with something that you feel that's in the way okay so once you've done your vivid vision Okay, there's a reason why, because tomorrow's assignment is going to be specifically about that. Okay, I'm going to give you an assignment that's specifically about this vivid vision. So I'm going to encourage you, as you're watching, if you haven't done so already, to write out what your vision is for yourself. After this whole concept, after this whole, um, you know, thing is blown over, and it will, I mean, this isn't the end of the world. It's not, first of all, the, the virus is not as threatening or serious as some people make it out to be. Yes, it's extremely contagious, which is why we're on lockdown. There's a mass hysteria. Is there Bill Gates and conspiracies that are all out to play? Maybe. I don't know. But the thing is, I don't care because I don't have control over that. I'm going to encourage you to just focus on the things that are actually in within your control. Okay? So 
whether this was all planned, this was all staged, whatever. Okay, great. As those conspiracy theorists are like diving deeper and then sharing that information, they're not actually part of the solution. But you are here, and so the reason why you're here is because you want to be part of the solution. So I'm going to encourage you very much to block out everything that's not moving you closer to that vision that you wrote down. But you must first write out that vision. That's the difference between this is a free group. I'm giving you my time and my expertise. And take what you, I mean, th this isn't going to be personalized to you. This is generalized. If you want personal help and you're like, look, this is exactly what I want, you can reach out to me privately and we can, you know, potentially get on a call and see what you'd like to create so that it, it could be personalized for you, personalized for your traumas. But this is general information that I, I'm going to really highly suggest that you do the work that I'm, I'm sharing. Because if you don't, your nervous system is at stake and I'm giving you tools that, that work that take people in hopeless situations. Uh, one person that comes to mind, Michelle, who was going through a toxic relationship breakdown with a codependent narcissistic cycle, and her health was completely shit, and she was in crisis. Like, her body was in crisis. Everything was in a state of fear, and we did the exact same thing that I'm doing with you, except it was personalized to her, and we created a vision and an alter ego and within several months, actually we worked with her for quite some time, but she went from that specific period to leaving that relationship, making more money than she ever has in her uh, financial advising business, and having a deeper connection with her daughter who felt more like bonded with her and deeper and safer than ever. And she consistently messages me and says, this changed my life, this saved my life. She went down like eight medications just by taking on this work and we did this exact thing. We actually said, all right, yeah, yeah, but no, there's so much chaos going on around me. Yes, I know, that's the whole point. While the, the, the collective is going through this chaos, your job is to raise above and have a clearer, more, expansive vision for yourself and your contribution to this life because here's the truth of it we're now kind of the collective is now being faced with with some some cold hard truths that you know it's like life as we knew it is not the same and then that leaves us with well who am i this is all the same questions everybody who's in crisis who reaches out to us asks i don't know who i am I feel like I've lost myself. And this is exposing all of our non-groundedness. So the people that had no training in grounding themselves and they were chasing after external shiny new objects or external validation or success in terms of financial means and didn't have a grounding in who they were with the tools of self-regulation and being healed from their pasts, if they didn't have that, those types of people are completely lost. And there's a quote that I had shared in the earlier one. I, f I forget who, who, who said it. It said, in times of change, the learners shall inherit the earth, while the learned will find themselves beautifully equipped for a world that does not exist. It's worth me saying again. In times of change, please someone tell me who, who, what quote is that? In times of change, the learners shall inherit the earth, while the learned will find themselves beautifully equipped for a world that does not exist. It means you must become adaptable and learn. You must start to take in all of the information that's going to help you with a constantly changing world. Adapt or die. These are tools for resilience. And I'm so grateful that I learned these tools because now I'm getting messages from my clients going, holy crap, everyone's freaking out around me, but I'm staying calm. Or Kim, who has 30 years of anxiety, one of our, our community, uh, she's our community manager, uh, one of my first ever clients in, this, in our program, 30 years of anxiety medication 
And she is like, look, if this happened, if this whole thing happened like a couple of years ago, before I started working with you, I would be a freaking mess. But I'm taking this really well. Our clients are like all saying, holy crap, this is a scary time, but I'm looking around and I'm way more grounded. And this, this is the product of like decades of work, of my own personal work, of hundreds of thousands of dollars of investing in training to learn how simply, I'm embarrassed to say it, I don't even wanna say it because I'm so embarrassed, how to love yourself. <laughs> in, all, in all of my years studying healing, um, healing modalities, neuroscience, I know no better healing modality than the healing modality of love, gratitude, and self-love, actually. And I'm kind of embarrassed to say it as a healthcare practitioner, but that's why I left my chiropractic practice full-time, because I actually wanted to uh, get to the root cause and just keep going upstream as to the stress-related problem, as upstream of the stress-related problem that brought people into my office in the first place. And I discovered that a fracture, a dissociation from the self at a young age, which caused us to betray and abandon ourselves. And every single time we get triggered, we revert back to that young self. And just by going back and starting to heal those wounds, you then start to open up portals into your future. It's happening with our clients, it's pretty exciting. And so when this shit came down, and I'm like sitting there going, what do I do? I'm gonna quarantine myself. It was like, duh, no brainer. We're gonna take calamity and turn it into service. That's what happens. You alchemize, when you get this right and you really do what I'm asking you to do and you commit to this, you can alchemize crisis and turn it into service. And no bullshit too, because the camera is on, it's pointing at me. You can tell from my tone, you can tell from my facial expressions if I'm bullshitting you or not. It's something that you can feel. You can even see it in a photograph. You can tell when someone's not really abiding by the work. And for so many years I was teaching, but I wasn't actually embodying it. There's a difference between having it here and dropping it here. And that's the huge chasm between head and heart that people don't really know how to uh, cross. And this is really the whole point of why we're here so that we can get here so that people can feel us and we have intimacy. And I always say to people that the two most important lessons that you're gonna learn this year, number one is to be able to, the ability, the skill of taking your trigger, which causes you to judge, abandon, blame, and shame yourself and turning it into self-love, and to take conflicts between each other and turning the conflict into a portal for deeper intimacy. The two most important skills that you're gonna learn as a human being after all of the years that I've studied and taught and experienced, these are the two most, um, I guess, crowning achievements of my education. The ability to take a trigger and turn it, instead of blaming, shaming, beating myself up over it, to turn it into deeper self-love and to take uh, conflicts that I go through in my personal relationships, parents, partner, which is going to happen when you have two different value systems, and turning that conflict into deeper intimacy. The result has been a network of friends uh, that I feel more intimately uh, connected with, that I feel seen and heard by, and a capacity to really see and hear them, and a uh, secure attached relationship for the very first time in my life that feels like home, who is an absolute sweetheart, who feels like safe home. <laughs> home base and uh, I'm, we're about to have a baby and getting married next month let's see if that's happening but that's what what's on the other side of this work and I really want to see that for you um, Eric thank you Eric Hoffer that's it <laughs> thanks guys Eric Hoffer in times of change please write this down write this down write that down that, that that quote in times of change the learners shall inherit the earth while the learned will find themselves beautifully equipped for a world that does not exist amazing um times of change don't be embarrassed you teach many humans how to be happy F few few can claim to have done that yes all right so 
essentially, I want to first of all, first of all, I want to say a massive gratitude for the challenges that I've been through over the last, I would say, 10 years. Every single thing that I've gone through has been on the way to helping for this moment. Every calamity that I've gone through, every relationship breakdown has kind of forced me to go and find the tools to repair my heart and my soul. And it's emerged this deep um, um, calling within me that I want, that I stand for healed families, that, that the result of this work is breaking the cycles of intergenerational trauma by teaching people how to regulate themselves moment to moment so that they are in command of their minds instead of their minds being in command of them. And that is the foundational education that we don't really get in school. We get that, we get that modeled from our parents. And my question to you is, how were your parents in handling their adversities and their triggers? <laughs> I have Persian parents. <laughs> I love them to death. And when they would deal with adversity, especially with us, it didn't feel safe. There was highly, highly reactive to the, to the point where I still feel the trauma in my body. If I'm supposed to have some sort of bad news for them, I want to kind of censor them from that because I understand that they don't have an ability to regulate themselves. If you don't have an ability to regulate yourself, there is no safety for your loved ones to be able to, to feel seen and to show themselves. And I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying, the more you commit and dedicate yourself to this, the more possibility that you will be the light, you will be the safe place for others to share their shame, share their challenges, and have you not react and take, take it personally, um, it builds intimacy. Your reactivity is gonna block intimacy. So I'm hoping for you taking on this work, the responsibility of having other people feel calmer just by being in your presence. So Alessandra, I want to ask you this question. This is a question for you because you brought it up. It was really a, a really great point. And thanks for sharing about scroll up in his question is after people are around you, how do they feel? Do they feel more panicked? <laughs> is that really helping? You know, or do they feel calmer? I want you to be the latter. I want you to be the voice of <sighs> regulation. And it's very powerful, these tools, because when you get it right, people start feeling better just by being in your presence. When I started practicing this, I would be in my chiropractic office. Patients would walk in the door, and I'd be like, hi, welcome. I'd smile, and they'd be like, oh my god, I just feel better being in the room with you, Nima. I'm like, thanks, I'm working on myself. And when, when, I'm work, when I say I'm working on myself, I'm putting my nervous system as a priority. It sounds very narcissistic and selfish, but it's, there's, it's actually quite uh, the opposite. It's kind of putting on the oxygen mask here so that I can give one to you. And my nervous system tone and regulation is govern, it, it, it will govern my entire life. So it's a neat thing there's and here's the other secret that i wanted to share with you i have another ulterior motive for having this um this facebook group and having these calls twice a day the one in the morning at 11 uh, uh pacific time and 7 p.m pacific time it is a very selfish reason and here's why because if i know that i'm about to be on a call with you and I know that my nervous system tone will impact yours, just by me taking on that responsibility encourages me to do the work that I'm teaching. It encourages me to walk my talk. So guess what? Because you're here, I'm asking you to take on that responsibility for your family, for your children, for your partner, for your teammates for the clients that you work with, for the tribes that you are a leader in. If you can just pay attention and do everything that I ask on all of these calls, then they win. So we're going viral, but from a different perspective. Do you see what I'm saying? Fear 
spreads worse than fear is spreading far faster than this fucking virus. <laughs> and guess what? Let's spread regulation because what gets affected? Your immune system becomes affected if you do this work. Your social expansion happens. Connection, you can get, activate the social engagement system. And dare I say it, you might on the other side of this discover who you really are, your purpose. It's through your challenges you've ever, you've, that you've ever discovered it in the first place. So why don't we take this opportunity as a community to do it together? What do you say? Are there any other questions? I have a question. I very often find times where I find it hard to put in the consistent work for my projects. Sometimes feels like I'm living in a constant errand, but life is about the trip and not the destination. There's always going to be some blocking me, as you said, but I want to enjoy more the process rather than see it as an errand. Great question. Um, ba -ba -ba, would this be the alarmist? And I'm going to change that word by word intention first. Alessandro, thank you. Your baby, by the way, thanks you. Here's why this is important. If your wife, I'm going to address you, Eddie. I'm going to address you, uh, Alessandro, because I love you and uh, your beautiful wife. <clears throat> if you put her into a state of alarm, guess who gets impacted by the cortisol in her body? Your baby. That's right. So now that I know that I'm going to be a dad and my fiance, Diana, has a baby in her belly, in her womb, my number one priority every time I talk to her is to help her regulate. That's my full-time job right now. Whenever I talk to her is to have her feel seen because she's getting emotional and there's all this stuff going on and so there's, it's time for me to hold space so that she's able to process those emotions. And so it doesn't mean to shut them down. It means to allow that space, that safe space, to allow that to happen. And so by you doing that, you're contributing to a baby that's more regulated during turbulent times. Because it's been well documented that in utero, the stresses of the mother get passed down. The traumas of the mother, the fears, is, is this guy going to be around? that lack of safety that the mother feels gets imparted into the baby. So this is like, you, this is bigger, this is far bigger than you. So to restrain your tendency to become the alarmist, hey everyone, let's panic more, doesn't help your child. So I think, I think that it's a very wise decision for you to, to, to decide to change that. Eddie, I'm gonna answer your question. Um, you have three modalities. There's three modalities, and I t talk about this in our group call. Uh, Eckhart Tolle talks about three modalities that we have to change our relationship with the present moment, okay? Number one is total acceptance, okay, Eddie? When you co uh, confront a challenge, instantly you feel triggered and pay attention to your body, and it's going to start to clam up what you do is you go back into your body and you relax. In fact, I'm gonna raise my desk right now. I'm gonna raise my desk right now and I'm gonna show you, um, just give me a second, got one of those little standing desks because this is a lot of sitting. Okay, so what you're gonna do right now, I'm gonna get you to stand. Pay attention to your body. I'm gonna give you a nice stretch that you can do that opens up your heart because pay attention during these times of stress when you're confronted by something, holy crap, like literally ambulances in every moment. <laughs> it hasn't stopped. Um, your body wants to contract. Your shoulders hike up. Okay, notice. Notice during stress as a chiropractor, I'll put my hands on my patients. I'll go, do you realize you're wearing your shoulders as earrings? And they'd be like, oh yeah. And that's a very intelligent adaptation to stress why take a take a guess why well because your 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 nervous system is trying to trying to protect your carotid artery where you're most vulnerable so during times of stress you're going to notice like this what i'm going to get you to do is constantly check in into your body <sighs> stand up take a deep breath and just acknowledge that you're safe in this moment okay drop those shoulders Stretch them out and relax them. You'll notice they're probably tense. This is why, hint, hint, get yourself to a chiropractor. As soon as, you know, it's open, it's available, get yourself into chiropractic care. 
Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing what you're going to do is we have a tendency to hunch forward. Why? Because during times of stress, we're protecting our organs, right? So your physical body is a demonstration of what's going on in the mind. This is the mind-body connection. So we are shoulders up and forward. What you're going to want to do is to consistently meet the moment, meet and serve the moment with an open heart. And the way you do that is check in regularly, even put a timer on your phone every hour, beep, beep, check in. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back to your vision that you set out, and then you're gonna put your, you're gonna, what I'm gonna get you to do is to turn your, your, open your hands out that way. As you roll them out, you'll notice your, this is gonna roll the shoulders back. You're gonna roll them back and out and open up. You're gonna maybe hear a little bit of clicking. That's okay, just open it up, take a deep breath in. Opening it up, open, 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 drop the shoulders, hold it there for five seconds. Keep squeezing all the way open. Ah, now check that out. Ah, now I have an open heart. I'm meeting the unknown with an open heart. This is what I'm saying is I'm not afraid well, I am afraid. Let's let's not um, let's not. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Discredit or um, repress our fears. It's scary. I'm, I'm 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 you know I'm wise enough to admit that yeah, it's normal to feel that, and I, I'm okay with that. I'm scared, and I'm okay with that. And yet, at the same time, I'm going to meet the present moment with an open heart. So you're going to open up your physiology consistently, right? And so total acceptance is number one. Number two, Eddie, is enjoyment. Okay? Can you enjoy like washing dishes? Okay, I got to wash a bunch of dishes now, all right? Or I got to take out the garbage. The next three minutes are going to be hell. But the quest, here's the question I'm, I'm going to offer you. What would it be like for you if you can actually enjoy it? In other words, what would you bring and serve into the moment if you can actually enjoy it? Okay? The three modalities. Let me, the third one, I had it written down. Three modalities. And yeah, so a total acceptance, enjoyment, and number three, enthusiasm. Enthusiasm means the God within. So whatever you're doing, you're living in a constant errand. So I remember this. When I wanted to leave my chiropractic practice and go into teaching and speaking, I felt like being in the office was beneath me. I was fully in my ego and I was like, oh, when am I gonna get out of here and do what I really wanna do? And the answer was to love the hell that you're in. And the way that I did that was I actually went each patient, okay, in this patient, how can I bring enthusiasm? How can I bring enjoyment? And how can I have total acceptance? So those are the three things I want you to write down, Eddie. Acceptance, enjoyment, and enthusiasm. I want you to serve the present moment with those three things. How can I, and the question you want to ask is, how can I serve this present moment? Eddie, I hope that was useful to you. Let me know. Kyla, 100%, both of my pregnancies were stressful and I was not regulated. Both of my children carrying the same tendencies. Now, okay, now, Kyla, before you go off beating yourself up about that, which is the tendency for a mom to do, moms are great at the guilt thing and beating themselves up, what I want you to do, Kyla, because we've worked together, and by the way, I want to I want to congratulate Kyla. Kyla, I'd love for you to share in the comment section your experience. When we started working with Kyla, Kyla was on medica anti-anxiety medication and having diverticulitis pain like crazy, uh, constantly. And through the work, you've been able to get off your anxiety medications and your digestive system has healed dramatically. I don't know how much, but I'd love for you to share that. But that's amazing. But Kyla, I'm going to say this to you because you hold a special place in my heart because you were one of my chiropractic patients that left my practice because you didn't want to be talking about what's going on here. You just were like, crack me and you didn't like that. And then you came back eight years later and we did the work uh, and we continue along is to understand who you were at the time as a pregnant woman in the relationships that you were in, 
in the relationship that you were in, not really fully knowing who you are, not understanding nervous system regulation the way you do now, can you love and accept and understand that woman who was doing the best that she could at the time? Instead of turning around and going, oh no, I did this to my kids. Well, guess what? You have taken on the work now and you're breaking the cycles of intergenerational trauma you taking this on now and regulating yourself is the greatest gift that you're going to give your kids because a rising tide lifts all boats. And I'm grateful that you're here doing this work with us. <clears throat> Roland, these tools you're sharing are invaluable, Nima. Like you said, to know the concepts in theory is one thing, but putting them to regular practice makes all the difference. I can feel this changing my whole experience as I watch right now. That was my commitment to you, is that by watching the content you have with me, because of my nervous system regulation, that you're going to leave feeling more centered and in your heart. That's my commitment to you, because that's my gift. So I'm here, that's why I've been put on this earth. Is, to, is for healing, uh, that's my superpower. I'm a wizard when it comes to that. I suck at many things, but I'm actually very good at that. And so that's my commitment to you, Roland, and it's, I'm so grateful that you're part of the community as well. Roland and I were on the same salsa team like 10 years ago. <laughs> we would travel and we would compete and we would do all these dances and stuff like that. And it's so cool because you have a daughter and this is important for, for her. So I'm grateful that you're here and you're learning this. Um, it's true. See, here's the thing. As far as doing the work that I give you, it's, it's useful to know that lifting up a barbell and doing this with heavy weights will build my biceps. It's useful for me to know that, isn't it? But the only way that I will actually get these fucking beautiful guns that you see in front of you <laughs> is by actually doing the work. And so it's not enough to know to do it, you must do it. And there's never been more of an important time than right now for you to do it. So I encourage you to take advantage of this free content that people pay good money for um, to, to be part of this community and this tribe. You get to wash the dishes, exactly. <laughs> I get it now, of course, Kyla, yeah, you get it. Yes, you do, I love you. <laughs> 17 years on meds, now off for one year. So much better. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Love you. I could just give you this big hug and and uh, and your your lovely hubby as well. He's Jason, such a wonderful guy, and he's so supportive, loves you so much. Um, it was a gift to be able to contribute and watch your transformation and your relationship transformation use these tools. This is such a cool thing. Anybody else have any other questions? Has this been useful? Let me know. What's been your greatest takeaway so far? Write it down. What's been your greatest takeaway? Jasmine, I'm grateful that you're here. Uh, I want to me 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 mention something about ja uh, Jasmine. Uh, Jasmine was uh, kind of chatting with me last night. Um, if your nervous system has already been overloaded because of past trauma and you've never done this work before, you're at a disadvantage because it's kind of like this balloon analogy. You've already had this expansion and you're at the edge of your capacity and then all of a sudden, coronavirus. Are you very resilient? No. So consider that there's deeper things that need to be addressed and this free kind of content is going to be helpful. It's gonna keep you really uh, centered. It's gonna keep you from collapsing if you do it and participate and you're part of this conversation. Uh, and I encourage you to go further, go deeper. For those of you who are wanting to go deeper and get that special attention where we actually walk you through privately with all of your own past uh, kind of unhealed past, which is what we're really all about, uh, send me a DM and let me know if this is something you're absolutely committed to. We only want to work with those that are committed. There's going to be work that you do, but we're going to kind of walk you through instead of just handing you the playbook and saying, go ahead and do it. What we do is we actually walk you through in our program. If you, anybody who's been a part of it, um, I really want to encourage you to just light up in the comments, uh, kind of share in the comment section what your experience has been, um, what your experience has been at our events, 
um, at through our programs. Uh, for those people who are kind of like, what's going on here? How does it work? I really would love for you to share your experience, where you were before, what what the how difficult, challenging the work could be, what, but where you are now and what the difference is. I would love for you to share it in in the. Uh, in the comment section. That would mean a lot to me for you to share your experience. Eddie said, I wrote it down. Thanks. I'm a chiropractic student. I have a ton of breath work and I've done a ton of breath work and I still forget how useful it is. Yeah. Breath work is amazing. Yeah. So let's do it together right now. As you're standing, stand there together. I want you to stand up and expand that. This is the, this is the, uh, kind of the stance that, that you'll see me doing several times because I'm hunched over a computer. You're going to do this throughout your day. You're going to open up, open up, take a deep breath, <sighs> surrender the exhale two more times. <sighs> Am I safe in this moment? <sighs> Feel your body just sink into relaxation and safety. Are there any other questions? I've been through a byproduct of your program after the session. I couldn't remember why I was so flustered during the work, though. That was rough. Yeah, beautiful. Yes, yeah, yes. Um, it was um, Amanda, who was one of my students, who came to my facilitator's training and has kind of taken my, my, my work and adapted it with horses and fantastic. Um, that's great. This, this is an ongoing process. It's not easy. Are there any other questions? Has this been useful? Let me know. Has this been useful for you? Um, tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. my time, 2 p.m. Eastern, and then early morning in Australia uh, or late at night in Europe. We're going to be back on for your second lesson. And uh, you now have some tools and strategies to, to move forward. Uh, this has been a little bit long, but um, your questions have been great. Any other questions? Any, um, here's what I'd like for you to do. Think of about three to four or five people you know that really need to be here. And instead of the content, stop watching the news, stop looking at doomsday, it's not going to help you. It's not helping your growing baby. It's not helping at all. Just follow content that's going to allow you to be more centered, more creative. And at the end of this, what I'm hoping is that you come up with a strategy or solution that you're connected and you're able to share what your gifts are and use this as an opportunity rather than doomsday. It's all hell in a handbasket. Why does it have to be? The, the word uh, danger and opportunity are the same in, in Chinese, in Mandarin or Cantonese. I'm not sure. I'm paraphrasing. Let me know if this has been useful. We did a small session after speak. Ah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Eddie, that was you. Oh my God, that was you. I was just thinking about you a couple days ago, Eddie. Isn't it middle of the night over there in Barcelona? You're in Barcelona right now, aren't you? Holy crap. Um, okay, so here's the cool thing. I was at Barcelona Chiropractic College. Uh, when was this? This was back in June, I believe. Was it June? Was it June? Yeah, I think it was June. And I uh, did a talk at, like I was doing my overview experience. Um, and uh, in Barcelona, and they asked me to speak to the group of chiropractors at Barcelona Chiropractic. So I'm like, absolutely. And then Eddie was one of the people in the audience. And I was supposed to only talk for an hour, but then I ended up there for four hours. And Eddie was there and he put up his hand and he had a challenge. Eddie, do you mind me sharing a little bit about your story? Uh, do you mind just, just write down, you know, in there? Because I don't want to share this unless you feel comfortable, but I have these amazing photos of Eddie like in tears laying on the table with a bunch of Kleenex by his side because I took him through my overview method. The overview method is a tool that I've helped that I use to help clear past resentments. You hear me constantly say, you know, everything that you're going through is not really what's, what's happening now. It's what, what happened like 10 years ago. 20 years ago or when you were a kid, it's all coming to the surface right now. Well, we went after a scene when he was seven years old that was extremely confronting and conflicting. And through the magical use of these tools and questions and embodiment, he was able to turn it around and his life instantly changed in tears. And it was just a, an amazing, um, 
Yeah, I don't mind. Great. I'm proud of that day. It was amazing. Yeah, Eddie, that was a very memorable moment. I was just thinking about it just two days ago. I'm like, I wonder how I wonder how that guy is. And and it's you. There you are. <laughs> so cool. So it's this really so Eddie, make sure other people are in this group. Bring people into this group. Um, yeah, uh, Eddie, what you'll do is just message me directly, privately, and then we can talk more about it. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a tool. It's a methodology that takes these past distressful events and gets you to see it from a different perspective where you're no longer a victim. You don't see that it was in your way anymore. It was actually on the way. And we don't clear it just cognitively. He cleared it from his body. And literally, how long did it take us, Eddie? It must have taken us, what, 15, 20 minutes in front of all your classmates? Instantaneously, your life changed. Eddie's father died when he was seven years old. Eddie's father died. And Eddie, is this true? Your father was a chiropractor? Is this refresh my memory, but he came back to school after his father died and he was just like, wow, like the world seems different. It was one of obviously those, an earth shattering event. It was an earth shattering event for a seven year old boy, trauma of losing a father. And that moment has haunted him all of his life. And he was able to see that that moment was a gift how, how, how is that possible? You can, it's very possible. And his life completely, he was an architect. Okay, great. Um, and he's now basically Im imbued uh, his son with purpose. Uh, ever since then, he didn't realize, but nobody around him really had purpose and he had purpose. And it was all thanks to his dad leaving. And so he was able to open his heart to his father, have gratitude and have a, life-changing moment and I love doing that I travel around the world and teach people this stuff so Eddie I'm grateful that you're here and you're you know tuning in in the middle of the night over there in Europe how are things over there in Spain it's good to have you here um, any other questions any other questions that you have yes Jasmine I appreciate uh, this is helping you I'm grateful please let other people know to be part of this. I'm happy to have them join in. Any other questions in this Q&A? I love spending this time with you. Look, I might as well. It's like, what? I can't go anywhere else, right? So this is our social engagement, social connection. What I'm going to encourage you to do, please, is in the group, post your vision and something creative, a, a, a song that you want to play, something, a poem just displaying your creativity. Let's get your prefrontal cortex going. This is the war in, happening in your nervous system from your amygdala to your prefrontal cortex. And everything that I'm showing you and the lessons that I'm giving you is to get this part of your brain engaged, the most important thing. I'm grateful that you should, uh, let's see, Maureen. I was experiencing, but it led me to find my true career in life and he blessed he blessed my career. Absolutely, Eddie, he did. Um, I was experiencing a lot of overwhelm in my life with family and health issues. What I didn't know is that was grief. And through connecting to my feelings, I've been able to process the emotions. There was old trauma experiences hanging on, and I've been able to walk through them and see the other side. I'm so grateful I've been able to take on all the challenges that were to come to stay, come and stay the steady stand and feel resourced. Yes, Maureen, you've been a client probably you're one of my first clients ever since the beginning and it's grateful to have you. The other thing that I wanted to share is there are essential oils. There are oils. We have uh, somebody in uh, here. If you don't have access to them, let me know. I know somebody uh, in doTERRA and we, you'll see me doing this quite a bit. A lot all day I'll be put putting a roller with essential oils, uh, citrus and all this other stuff on guard or whatever they have is really neat and I will consistently be warming up my hands and smelling. Why? Why is that important? Because right now you're going to be going into your mind and all sorts of traumas and what ifs and everything. And it's important to get yourself back into your body, back into breath, back into your senses. So if you just take three deep breaths and smell something really nice, you're regulating your nervous system. It's pretty powerful. Any other questions or comments? 
We will see you tomorrow. Please post your revelations or breakthroughs or takeaways from this call. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. sharp for your next lesson. And um, we're going to start going into helping you kind of get into your breath and into your body, get you to follow along with the lessons every single time is to help you become more trigger proof, more in your heart, more out of your head and becoming the leader that you were designed to be. That's really what it's all about. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you for your participation. Go ahead and think of three or four or five other people that you know should be here and invite them in this group and invite them in this conversation. Big love to you. Thank you so much. Take care. See you tomorrow, guys. Be well.